Today, I'm gonna to show you the process of how we built this to run our festival summit events. Running Unify to deploy security, Wi-Fi for POS and card readers, internal comms, and to record the artists with some insane cameras. I can't wait to show you guys this. Let's get into it and discuss whether it was all worth it. We've been running events since 2021, and this year was our first festival. But this video isn't about that. You can see all of that over on my vlog channel. So we deployed three network switches, three access points, five cameras, one cloud gateway, three PoE injectors. Over our nine and a half hour day festival, we pushed 65 gig of traffic, 37 gig down and 27 gig up. 6.8 gig an hour, 114 meg a minute, or an average download speed of 8.7, with an average upload of 6.3. Which, in all honesty, doesn't seem too bad. And no, we didn't use a Starlink. I had this old point-to-point -point link kit lying around in the garage. And after talking to a local villager, he let us use his home internet connection, which was amazing. Thanks, villager. Ah. So for the brain, I built it all on this wooden board. And I had my friend Adam, who at the time was painting the bar, do some design on this, just to give it a nice little bit of edge. At the core, the cloud gateway fiber, a relatively new but really high-end bit of kit. This can run Unify network access and protect. It's also the router for your network, sorry. Router. It's really versatile with its PoE port on there, which can be remapped to WAN if you like, and that's what we did. Meaning I can power that internet receiver that lives on top of the bar that's bringing the internet in from the villager directly from the cloud gateway fiber. Nice. Next up, it gets a bit messy, but bear with me. Three PoE injectors on the back, one powering the flex switch on the front. An amazing switch because whilst being powered via PoE, it can provide PoE out on its remaining four ports. This switch was then used to power a U7 outdoor access point and a G6 turret camera that live on our brain board. This then lives in the bar and provides Wi-Fi and security in the bar whilst looking sick at the same time. Now, those are the two PoE injectors on the back of our brain board. One was used for a beast, the PoE Industrial. This is a sick camera, although it's a CCTV camera really, it's unreal. It has pan tilt zoom and the ability to zoom up to 22 times optically, meaning it can live up here on the bar and record the main acts on the stage, which is amazing in full 4K. The last PoE injector behind our brain board was feeding a 70 meter cable run, Cat5, that goes off into the trees. On top of this container, we have no power, but because of that PoE injector that's behind the brain, we can light up another flex switch here, which can then power another U7 Pro for Wi-Fi and a G5 PTZ for a general security camera. Now the main protect deployment here was to record the axe on stage, not really for security, but I'm so glad I added these extra cameras into the mix. On the day, it was easy to view the whole place from one simple screen, which made it easy to monitor foot traffic, see the busiest areas, and from that, decipher why those areas were busy to make the festival better in the future. From the top of the container, we then ran another 100 meter ethernet run through to our second stage that lives in the woods. This then fed a PoE injector that fed, yes, another flex switch, along with another U7 outdoor access point, this this time with its Omni antennas attached to it so it has 360 coverage and to record the artists this beast the AI DSLR now this is a security camera from Ubiquiti that you can basically attach your own camera lens to which is absolutely crazy we also had a bullet camera for security at the back and stage two the stage in the woods turned out to be the most popular stage so I'm glad I used the AI DSLR here the footage looks insane now I had a I originally planned to link all the locations together with the UDB Sector and UDB Pro bridges. These are basically Ubiquiti's wireless bridge kits that they make for Unify. And although they are super easy to set up with inside Unify, it was easier for us to run a cable. However, the only place we struggled to get an internet connection to was the actual main stage itself. There was no way to run a cable to here, so I did use one UDB Pro. This is an 
ace little device that can connect to your existing Unify Wi-Fi and then give you a PoE port to connect something like another Wi-Fi access point or in our case, another camera that recorded behind the main stage, mainly for security purposes because we had some quite big acts up here on the main stage. So that's all the equipment deployed, but how did I set it up? Did it all actually work? Like, was it worth it? First, an internet speed test from the neighbor showed 85 meg down and 10 meg up. So straight away, I went into the WAN settings to limit the QoS. I did this to 60 down and 70 up respectively to make sure we have some headroom to play with. This is one of the most important settings because if you max out any internet connection, this will then lead to ping spikes and the whole internet connection just coming to a freeze. To create a limited free Wi-Fi for everybody that came to our festival, I did it the proper way. First, I created a new internet network. I checked a guest network and then applied the settings. That's it, we have a guest network that is segregated from our main network. I then created a new Wi-Fi network, told it to use our new guest network and turned on device isolation. That way all the devices that connect to this Wi-Fi can't see each other. But we've got a thousand people coming to this festival, so how do we make sure that our guests at the festival don't use up all of our data? Because at the end of the day, this Wi-Fi is really for the production teams and car machines in all of the bars. To limit the guests, first we limit the entire guest network. I did it to 20 down and 2.5 up, meaning all of the guests as a collective only have access to 20 meg of our connection. Once you've done that, then you can limit the Wi-Fi speed on the guest network. For our deployment, I went for 3 meg down and 1 meg up. This way the Wi-Fi should work all day without the guests hogging up all of the bandwidth, but they have enough to do what they need to do and all of our point of sale and comms should continue working without the internet grinding to a halt. With this setup, the only thing that will ever be affected is the guest network. The rest of the network should still operate fine. For some more technical details, the internal and guest network were limited to five gigahertz only. I wouldn't recommend using 2.4 gigahertz at all for a deployment like this. Although some point of sale and card readers can't see five gigahertz, so I had to create a separate 2.4 gigahertz network just for the specific devices. Minimum RSSI is also a great option for a deployment like this. Inside of Unify, this is configured per access point, and basically what it will do is it will kick off any client that doesn't meet the signal criteria. So if they have a weak signal, the access point will just kick them off. And typically it's those weakest, clients that have the biggest impact negatively on the whole of the Wi-Fi network. So kicking off those clients with a weak signal will improve things vastly. So all that's to say, how did it perform? Yeah, I mean, it was solid, absolutely solid. We had live streams running all day. There was people using the free Wi-Fi. I spoke to all the vendors at the end and none of them said they had a missed payment or that the internet wasn't working. So absolute thumbs up here. The problem is with a thousand people gathering in a field, mobile data usually grinds to a halt. My idea with this wasn't to take people away from the festival, but to give them the opportunity to communicate and share their experiences, which will have a dramatic effect on the festival moving forward as well on the whole. As for Protect, amazing. The cameras just ran and recorded all day in glorious 4K to the MVME inside of the Cloud Gateway Fiber. It just worked. I didn't need to check it. And for that, I was really grateful. It was a great peace of mind thing. And then when I got home, it was easy to use Protect to archive all of that footage straight to my NAS on the network. And just like that, I have 700 gig of my festival recorded from multiple angles all day, I can keep the artists happy, security happy, and we can see what parts of the festival worked best and what parts were the busiest and why. So there you guys have it. Possibly the strangest, but craziest and most fun deployment I've ever done. I wanna say a massive thanks to Ubiquity for making all of this possible. A massive thanks to you guys for watching and Squarespace, thanks for sponsoring the video. We use Squarespace to make MMWiFi.io, my Wi-Fi company's website, which looks absolutely stunning with all of the animations. Unlock your creative and earning potential with features like Squarespace Payments, which lets you manage your transactions easily and effortlessly in one place. Enabling you to sell products on your Squarespace website, accepting the major payment methods like Klarna, Apple and Clearpay. 
If you're ready to bring your website to life, then you can save 10% on your first Squarespace purchase or domain using code TECHFLOW or go to squarespace.com forward slash TECHFLOW. We'll have that linked below. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Thank you.